Hey guys, what is up? So today I'm going to be analyzing my backhand in slow motion from two different angles. Now, I don't have an exact agenda for exactly what I'm going to point out. I'm going to go through my entire backhand and as we go along, I'm going to point out like things that I focus on, uh, things that I think will help a lot of people and just the process that my backhand goes through in general, which muscles are firing, when to do certain things, uh, when to turn, when to use your hands, blah blah blah, so those kind of things. Um, it might seem kind of random, but I'm going through my whole backhand and that's how it's going to be. But I want to start off by saying that my backhand is in no ways perfect. I don't consider any of my strokes perfect. And there's always something that I can be improving on. There's always more knowledge that I can incorporate, techniques that I can try. And that's okay. Like, I've been playing tennis for so long, but I know, like, as a coach, that there's always something to improve. And there's always a different way to be teaching one of my students any of the te techniques that I learn. And I'm certainly still learning new things about my stroke. And that's the most important thing. So I just wanted to start by saying like one of my goals is that every year I want to look back and say wow I was I am so much better at coaching than I was last year and it might seem like an overall like pretty broad goal but it's a goal that you know that has helped me continue to be passionate and interested and sometimes when I feel like, wow, like the student that I, the student that I taught in the past, I could have done a way better job. And like, that's kind of sad, but at the same time, that tells me that I'm growing and I'm learning. So I just want to put, a, put that out there. That's one of my goals. Um, yeah, comment down below what goals you guys have. And it doesn't have to be tennis related. But anyway, let's get started with my backhand. So, here is the full slow-mo. Now, if you guys watch the short, are already subscribed to my channel, or follow me on Instagram, then this will look very familiar to you, but today you have the entire unedited version of the video. Now let's start with my backswing. Try to notice that with my ready position, from here to the backswing, I'm not like pushing my racket way out in order to get to my backswing. My racket here is still fairly close to my body when I'm turning and it's not till I'm fully loaded that you see my right arm really starts to extend and my right arm is going to be closer to my body so I can create that line that I want. I can line my shoulders up and my rackets up before I unload and hit and hit through the ball. Now another thing I want you guys to notice is that how simple this whole process was. Like I'm not sure who um, who noticed this but like Suddenly, I was already at the end of my preparation and everything just seemed to kind of happen at once. Like, you want your preparation to be subtle and almost unnoticeable. So, let's backtrack and really dig deep into this. Because my racket is not fully extended out, I don't straighten my arms right at the beginning of my backhand, my racket, my shoulders, and my hips can stay very together. And just a simple shoulder turn and me stepping out already creates uh, my backswing timing and having everything prepare like smoothly without one thing or another standing out that much. Now, I get, I actually get a lot of compliments for how simple and efficient my strokes look. And a lot of it's because of this exact thing, this type of rhythm 
that I have in my forehand and my backhand that everything just seems to prepare naturally and together and we're gonna go more into how that's done so first of all it's like the simple like I keep my hands together I don't go like this and then turn and you'll notice that like once I see the ball and I turn my hips also turn along with the like to the direction that I'm moving to now this is one of the most important parts is I'm fully loaded and ready to hit when I step with my left foot now I haven't even stepped in with my right foot yet and you notice that my left foot is facing the side of the court which allows my hips to turn and load how I want them how I want them to so the second I step I'm almost like ready to hit the second I I step forward to hit the ball. Now on this ball, I'm not even trying to crush it or anything, but I'm still getting a good amount of power just by doing these steps correctly and efficiently. Now, you're gonna notice that there's a slight bend here. A lot of people, they will, um, let's move this. I didn't realize my head was in the way. They won't bend on their left foot enough before they step in and hit. But that's actually where you have to load. You can kind of feel my body tension right here is when I get the most power. And then when I step in, it's like everything releases and it doesn't take, it doesn't seem frantic because of how early things happened. Like you can, you can um, be really late and then suddenly bring your racket back and forward again and you might make the ball on time, but that takes like five, like that takes so much perfect timing and, and if you want to be good at it and play at a high level with it, it's going to take like so much longer and so much more practice just practicing waving your racket back and forth as fast as you can with perfect timing that I just I don't recommend it because you do lose a lot of control if you have to rush like that now the timing I see a lot of people finishing their backswing is when they actually step with the right foot when they step with the right foot their racket is going backwards like into their stroke but notice that when I step with my right foot my racket's already dropping and getting ready to hit. That's where the, that's kind of where the shift and the, um, yeah, that's where like the weight shift comes from and transferring your weight forward. So see, even if I, I need to step back to hit this ball, when I'm on my left, when I step back with my left, everything is already kind of turned. It's like, wait, when did he get ready for this shot? See, all those things happen together in the span of like one second there, even in slow-mo. And then when I step in with my right, racket is already dropping, already in the hitting motion. And I go really far through the ball. So with, um, with your right foot, I'm not too particular on which way your right foot is pointing because when you step in, it just, it kind of depends because if this is too far facing the side, it's a little bit hard to let your hips through, like you see here. But it's going to vary a little tiny bit depending on, on grips and how far your contact is from your body. So generally my foot is pointed slightly forward. But some people are just different. Now, I'm, I'm rotating here and it's like a horizontal rotation as you can see from my hips. But I stay pretty closed throughout this entire process until the ball has fully left my racket and then my shoulders go and my hips go all the way through. Now you see my left foot here. After I hit, it 
kind of just naturally follows my hips to the side. Now you don't want to fall through, stop, and then push back up with your right foot. With your, yeah, with your right foot. Like the foot that's in front, you don't want to just be pushing back. You want to let that left side come through because that means you've shifted your weight and you, you let everything, all that power you stored, go through the correct way. Like everything's going into the ball rather than you're hitting it and then you're holding, you're holding it back. So let's talk about my left hand here. Actually, let's talk about my grip here. So on my grip, my, my right hand is an Eastern back, an Eastern forehand grip. So if you were to hit an Eastern forehand with your left, with your right hand, um, that's where my grip is. Sometimes it's slightly higher, so it's in between Eastern and Continental. And for my left hand grip, I have also Eastern to con like in between Eastern and Continental, more a little more towards Eastern. But I have in the past had a more Continental grip on my on my right hand, on my bottom hand, but. I've kind of found that like the ball gets a little too spinny for my liking and, I, and I'll brush the ball way too fast, but uh, Djokovic uses a continental so, you know, um, it's just kind of know your body and like a range of grips is acceptable. You don't have to, you don't have to be like hardcore about one grip or the other as long as it's inside of the range. Now let's talk about contact point. Alright, so contact point slightly in front of my hip, nothing, um, nothing mind-blowing, but this is how I know that my left hand is really doing work. Watch my left hand here and watch my racket face. So I'm right about to contact the ball, I contact the ball and my left hand starts to extend, but look at how forward my racket face is still, even after the ball has left my racket. So this is going to ensure that you have the biggest chance of hitting in the direction that you want to go. And at this point you can really see my left hand extending through and into my follow through while I'm rotating all the way through. And you'll see my left foot come out after my hip again right there. And again, left hand all the way out. And you just just let your hands follow through like somewhere over your shoulders. Some Andy Murray actually finishes like lower than his shoulder, which is totally fine, but let the racket go all the way. You know, it's more about the uh, it's more about the transfer of your weight there. That makes it like you don't want to be stopping your racket too much. But I mean, there there are some shots where you're going to like, you're going to stop before your follow through, but those are a little more specific, and I'm not going to go through them today. So let's look at this. Let's look at this one now. Because I'm sure there's some other things I can I can point out here from this view. Alright, so on my backswing, I like to keep my wrist at this angle and just have the racket like kind of similar to the orientation it was when I was in ready position because I'm just turning my shoulders here. And when you guys see this part, when you guys see this part, like with the racket dropping, I'm not purposely dropping my racket like that. I'm actually trying to keep my wrist in the same orientation, but when I drop my racket and I swing, that automatically happens. Now, dropping my racket, I guess, is not the right way to say it. 
I'm dropping my hands. Like, I'm letting my hands come down from this position. And my racket will automatically drop when I accelerate. If you are breaking your wrist before you hit on purpose, that is going to kill a lot of power and it's actually going to make you less consistent because you're, you have to now time the wrist snapping back into the correct position when you're hitting and that's going to make it very difficult especially when the balls are coming at different heights and different spins. Now from this angle it's my horizontal rotation with my hips is very obvious. I think a couple of these balls are really short so I'm reaching for a lot of these balls. Yeah, pretty short. But another thing I want you guys to notice is like watch my left hand here and the orientation of my elbow. Hands under the elbow, okay? And by this time, your elbow is not like, like this. You're not scooping the ball like this. You're letting your hands drop like this. Now, Medvedev does not do that. He, he keeps his elbow quite high and he scoops through the ball. And I just, I am mind blown because he's like one of the only guys that does this very, very successfully. Him and Cam Dory, I can't figure out their backhands. And it's interesting because they don't even have the same grip, so they don't... So like, I would, wouldn't think that they had some of the same mechanics in terms of like... Yeah, but... But I... This is... I don't know, see, I'm just so speechless. Like, Medvedev is my favorite player and his backhand just totally confounds me. But anyway, here you can see... Watch my head, how still it is, and... Until I let my racket go all the way out. I think that's actually the key to Medvedev's consistency on his backhand. Like he never misses backhands and he's closed for so long and his racket stays in line for so long that like even though for some reason he like doesn't get under the ball, he can still hit his backhand with pinpoint accuracy. Now I don't, if you guys have noticed in this, uh, where's that really short ball? Nope, that one's not it. Okay, some of you might have noticed that for this ball, my right, my left foot, my back foot goes really far back, almost into like a bowling position, and it's like that is not what it looks like at all from the baseline, right? But I want to explain this because this is pretty cool. This ball was really low and I didn't exactly move up to it early enough. So what's my priority? It's to, first of all, it's to keep my body in a line that I want to, like based on where I'm aiming. And this foot goes back to counterbalance the rotation. So see, like my body wants to turn and this foot counterbalances the rotation especially because I'm hitting down the line so that I don't open up too much when I'm hitting a shot that's not exactly in my strike zone. So if I just play this video out you'll see that there's a lot of counterbalancing here and it actually allows my racket to stay online, in line for when I'm hitting down the line. And on a more normal shot, my foot won't go back as much and it just flows out towards the ball. But even on this shot, you'll see that in the end, after all that counterbalancing, my hips still end up turning through the ball. And just an effortless transfer of power is something that like all the pros do like everyone's backswing racket angle would be slightly different and kind of like everyone has their ticks but I guarantee this part with the hips and then upper body shoulders and legs coming through like that that's something that all really good backhands have in common now I'm not saying my backhands really good but 
it's just the concept that I want to impart on the people and I want it to become common knowledge so everyone can use it. A lot of short balls here that I'm not expecting because I'm trying to stay in the camera <laughs> when taking these shots so ideally I wanted my <laughs> I wanted the feeds to be deeper and right to me but but these are okay. Okay, so let's move this. As I was talking about before, the left foot is there. Hips are loaded. I want to talk about the the tilt of the shoulders. One thing that I've noticed in a lot of players is that they actually tilt the shoulders too much. Like for the guys that are that find it really difficult to get under the ball. Like here, I realize my shoulders are tilted, but it, my legs and hips are bent. You can see by the time, like you see my back is actually pretty straight and my hips are not are no longer like hunched over when I'm hitting the ball. And that lets me get under the ball. You don't want to be over the ball too much like you're shoveling downwards. And when people try to get power, that is one of the number one things that I see is that people really bear down on that and then they can't get under the ball. So while a little bit tilt is okay, you wanna you wanna watch how you're doing it. Like both uh, both knees need to bend. You need to load with your back hip still because a lot of pe times when people are leaning in they'll just straighten the back leg and only bend the right leg and that creates a huge imbalance in in the stroke and especially someone's ability to get under the ball because on the backhand we have at least the two-handers we have a lot less extension just because both hands have to be on the racket and it really creates like a hard time and you can't like just reach, get under and reach and whip the ball like you can on your forehand side. So that's like one tough part about the two-handed backhand, but the trade-off is that you can replicate the stroke like a thousand times. And if your hands are tired, it, it you can still hit a backhand. Whereas if like my hands are, are tired, it's harder to hit a forehand. Now, something I would like to change on my own stroke is I would like to be a little bit more upright and I would like my stance to be wider and my butt to be down earlier. Like here I'm in a good position, but I'm a little hunched over in the beginning. And I notice when I run really out wide that my coaching footwork has gotten the better of me and I just like hunch over and reach for the ball now. <laughs> And I think that's that's really where it comes from. If you watch the greatest running backhands, you'll see how how much of a triangle these guys are. Like their base is so much wider, and they're still able to keep their upper body like pretty much inside the scope of their feet. And that creates like just such an effortless um, transfer of power. You watch Djokovic, like I explained the Djokovic's like triangle in a previous video that you guys might want to watch. And here, and these are the backhands that, here's some backhands that I'm hitting like in regular time. So when I'm tight and I'm hitting in a match, my hands won't drop as much. And that's something that that I really need to work on. So I feel like what happens when I don't play well is my racket will just flip, my racket will flip over too much. And I'll end up shanking a lot of balls because of that. Because I'm trying to make sure the ball doesn't go long, right? And that really hurts your contact because your contact then is not as, is not as square. as you want it to be. Now, like my base could be so much wider and I would like to think that if I was competing, my base will just go back to being wide. 
So try to have your hips and your butt in between your legs if you can when you're especially when you're transferring when you're transferring your weight forward and I think for those of you that have trouble getting under the ball and driving your backhand uh, comfortably like that is going to be a really good tip to keep everything balanced out as for the follow-through you'll see my follow-through is here I just let my hands go all the way and hit myself in the back and you know I, I, I don't really like deceleration through any stroke I think if you're decelerating through your stroke then there's some part of you that doesn't trust your stroke and that you think it's gonna fly so you might have other things to look at if you find that you can't the ones where you finally get yourself to fall through they you know you hit your strings and you still don't feel good um, there might be other things but generally on the backhand the biggest things I see are going back to when to prepare the preparation the hands just people pushing their hands out too long and not and keeping them out there too long until they have to hit then they have to bring it back and then hit that is one of the one of the biggest things that I see and not using the left side left hand to dominate enough like you keep your head still move your move your left hand all the way through the ball and that's where you're gonna get the actual feel. A lot of people that don't have feel on their backhands because you're not using your left hand, you're pulling with your right. And because your right hand's not the thing that's guiding the racket face, you pull too fast, you're gonna feel like, even when you hit the strings, that the ball isn't going where you want or you can't, you can't tell like on your forehand. I feel like most people have feel on their forehands even if they don't like how even if you favor your backhand, at least on the forehand you'll have feel because you have because your your dominant hand is your hitting hand. Now on your backhand, your dominant hand and hitting hand needs to be the left hand. And since on two handers, um, most two handers are right handed, their bottom hand is your dominant hand. The ones, a lot of the ones that have trouble will pull too much with the dominant hand. Now going back to that. The dominant hand or your your right hand has to go out it has to go forward and out to allow the racket and the left hand to go out as well okay you don't want to pull your right hand to the left too early okay I mean you don't want to pull your right hand to the right too early and just finish like like that you want to go there and then finish so I think I've talked about everything down to from like the backswing um, bracket face loading with your hips left foot when to step in uh, what your hands are no, what your hands are doing as you step in I think that's mostly everything um, if I forgot something, I don't know, it'll show up in another video, but I threw a ton of info out there already, so hopefully you guys can add some of this to your game, and your backhand will turn into the backhand of your dreams. Or not, but, you know, it's always good to learn, and you guys always can practice more, just like me. We all have to get out there and practice if you want to improve, but... Anyways, um, don't forget to like and subscribe. I need to remember to say that more. And follow me on Instagram, y.lester on Instagram. Lester with two T's, y.l.e.s.t.t.e.r. Now, I want to say one thing about following me on Instagram. I've been getting a lot of requests for advice lately, and... It's not that I don't like giving advice, but I can't analyze everyone's videos that they're sending me, like like individual requests, not when I ask, hey, send me your videos, I'll make a video, you know? Like individual requests for me to l watch video and analyze the game 
and give tips and tricks on how to fix your form. It's not that I don't want to do that. It's that like, like ten teaching tennis is, you know, is my job. It's, it's my passion too. It's my job and I make a living off of it. It's not that I don't like to do it. It's just I can't really respond to every single person asking for basically free advice. And it kind of takes a toll on me mentally because I personally, I don't, I love it when people are trying to learn. And I can sense that everyone that is reaching out has a lot of passion for the game, which is awesome, you know? So I, I do want to give the advice and I do want to take the time, but but for me mentally, I just, I can't be in that mode all the time where I'm just like, every request I get, I, I give a piece of advice or, and, and anytime I have to kind of say no gently, even, even then it takes a toll on me mentally because I don't like to say no to people. And that's why I'm kind of doing this YouTube thing to where I, I am, I'm, I'm trying, I'm trying to like, the advice that I do think of, I'm putting it together in a video and I'm throwing it out there, but kind of on my terms, you know, like giving the lessons that I want to give to the general community. Now, I have in the past done where like I'll analyze your videos and I'll analyze a video kind of like an online lesson and teach online for for a fee of course and that's more of like an online teaching lesson so if that's what people want that's something else we can think about but in terms of in terms of value i really think private coaching like in person is a lot more worth it because there are things i can say but whether i whether like i know it got across to you correctly or not is a different story and that freaks me out like like, I know what I'm trying to say, but if you're not there in person to show me that you actually understand what I'm trying to teach you, then, like, it drives me nuts knowing that, okay, they might not have received this info properly because I want you to learn as much as you can. So I try to avoid online teaching, and especially because, like, I can say a lot of generic stuff and I won't, I won't exactly be sure whether you had to hear it or not but anyway that's kind of a tangent um to anyone that has sent me a private message on like advice and stuff like that's perfectly fine don't worry about that at all i just want to put it out there that i would rather not have people just enter my dms to ask for advice on my instagram because like i need to keep this um I just can't do it for everybody and I hope you guys understand because I love the community and I love you guys but it really does wear on me mentally especially because I like sometimes I I see a message and I, I'm doing something else that I'm not teaching tennis I'm finally off the court after hours of teaching and I need to teach more tennis when I'm when I'm trying to like rock climb or hang with my friends and it like even just if that message there it is there, it'll be hanging in the back of my head, you know? But, yeah. But anyway, um, I hope you guys enjoyed that. I'm trying to keep it real, always. And, of course, I hope this whole session has helped a lot of people with their backhands. Um, comment down below what you think. Comment down below what your goals for this year are. And I will see you guys next time. As always, have a good one, and peace out.